We turn now to Donald Trump again and how he spent part of his day on social media attacking the daughter of the judge in his hush money case. The former president mentioned her by name in a post, which included a false claim about a social media account that shares a handle that she once used. Trump ranted about a picture of him behind bars that had been posted to the account, and he claimed it proves he can't get a fair trial. But the New York State Court says the handle no longer belongs to the judge's daughter, according to a court spokesperson. She deleted it about a year ago, and apparently someone else has since taken it over, but it's not clear who. Now, while Trump is under a gag order in the case, it does not apply to the judge or his family. So here's how former federal prosecutor Andrew Weissman reacted to Trump's comments. It actually is something that could be stopped. I mean, there could be the gag order could apply to both the judge and the judge's family. And this is one where, as a matter of grace, the judges have not imposed the gag order as to themselves. Right. And judges, I think, bend over backwards. Um, but it'll be interesting to see whether uh, Judge Marchand does um, expands it. It's just Donald Trump. It's just Donald Trump. More, more of the same. It is. It is really important not to ha just get to normalize this. Yes, and amen. not to. I mean, so many people talk about pre 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 sort of predicting what would a Trump 2.0 administration be, and should we really think he's going to be a dictator, and mm -hmm. what will happen? And my response to that is. You can look right now That's at right. what he's doing and saying. And for people who are fair-minded, I would say, what do you say about somebody who attacks the daughter of a judge? That's right. As, I mean, that does. I mean, is there no depth to which she will not, you know, descend? I mean, it is. It is so important to not get inured to what this is. Well, it, but. but the courts allow it. They really do. I, I will say again, practicing law for a short while, I practiced law when I was younger. I, if anybody, if a defendant, if a lawyer, if anybody said something like this about a judge or a judge's family member, uh, they would immediately go to jail. It would be contempt. They'd be found and they might be given a really harsh warning. Their lawyer would probably be warned, you know, do this again. If he does this again or she does this again, you're going to be sanctioned. Uh, and then I'm, I'm going to send your client to jail and let him think about it. That's just what happened to you, to me, to anybody that talked about judge that way. Donald Trump, you know, it, it, his, his supporters are right. There is a two-tiered legal system. And Donald Trump's a beneficiary of it, certainly in this case. John, John Hyland, I mean, it's amazing. Here we have, and you brought up a great point to me, Joe Biden raised more money in one night, as you said, than Donald Trump will probably raise in the entire first quarter of this election year. And while Joe Biden's doing that, Donald Trump's continuing to engage in the type of behavior it cost him almost $100 million when he couldn't shut his mouth about E. Jean Carroll, even after he had a defamation judgment uh, handed down against him. He's doing it now. Gag order. And what's he doing? He's going after a judge's family member. Right. So, Joe, there were a few months ago when uh, we were on the air talking about this, uh, we talked about the fact that Trump would would do, would, would, would not, nothing would stop him, uh, no matter how a gag order was, a limited gag order, a sweeping gag order, that he would never shut up and that he would keep doing what he does because he's never uh, paid a real price for uh, saying outrageous, outlandish, threatening things. He's never paid a price. In fact, he's been rewarded for that in a lot of regards. And I said, you know, uh, uh, you know people would say, well, you know, if he does this uh, in this coming year, some judges, they have the power they could put him in jail. You know, they could slap a contempt order on him and they could jail him. And my question at the time was, is, are any of these judges going to have the stones to do that? Are they going to just, are they going to, is it actually ever going to happen? Of course they have that power, but will they actually do it? Constrained by whatever set of 
uh, either fear or some misguided sense of, of uh, not wanting to set precedent. He's a former president. It's a campaign. We don't want to be seen as jailing as someone who's uh, active in the presidential race. I just raised the question, will anybody, any of these judges in any of these cases, will any of them actually have you know, the balls to do this and put him behind it? Because he's going to do it. He's going to do things that merit that. So I ask you, because unlike you, I'm not even a simple country lawyer. You, simple country lawyer. Me, not, none of those things, right? Why are they, why not? What is the what is the thing that would constrain any of these judges, but in this case, this judge, from basically saying, uh, here's the strictest possible gag order, and the first time you violate it, I'm going to put you in jail, and you'll sit there and rot for however long. I don't think it'll happen, and, and we're not seeing it yet. So what stops them? I don't know, because I, I tell you what, the judges that... I, I went before, would have done it in a second. They would have done it to anybody. And I understand he's a presidential candidate. I also understand he's a presidential candidate in large part because he knew all of this was coming. We said it in 2019. We said it in 2020. We said it in 2021. We've been saying he's going to run for president because he knows he's gotten himself in such legal trouble. So if I'm a judge... Um, I just lay it out straight to the lawyer and, and to the defendant, in this case, Donald Trump, which is, this is a gag order. If you violate it, let me give you 10 examples of people who have violated gag orders in this court and what happened to them. And that's going to happen to you. And whatever sanction that is for the attorneys, whatever sanction that is for the defendant, uh, it happens. But this is a sort of behavior, especially in federal court. My God. In Northwest Florida, my God, you would be buried in jail uh, for a week. If I, I mean, there's a woman who fell asleep uh, during jury duty who got sent to jail for contempt of court. <laughs> I mean, so when you have a defendant lying about a judge's family member because the defendant knows that will put... Uh, the the judge's daughter in danger of imminent harm. It's a pretty easy call. Uh, Susan Page, seems like a pretty easy call to me as an attorney. I'm curious, uh, feel free to ask Dave Ehrenberg a question, but I'm curious your thoughts about this, this very unique position that judges find themselves in because Donald Trump is a presidential candidate. You know, there's uh, there's a question of respect for the court, surely, in play here. There's another question with these uh, these attacks, and that is that it is a true danger. It is dangerous to the judge's daughter to have these attacks leveled at her. We know how violent American politics have gotten. Uh, we know how uh, figures on the extremes can be incited to violence by the words of Donald Trump. Uh, so that that is a that's a perspective that sh we know how we know what social media can be like, especially in attacking women and attacking young women. And I wonder, Dave, from a legal perspective, does that play into this at all? Is it not just a question of respect for the court, but also a question of the consequences for the kind of language that we're seeing? Yeah, Susan, absolutely. You know, Donald Trump will say the First Amendment protects him. But criminal defendants are always limited in what they can say. You know, after you are arrested and uh, you were brought before a judge for first appearance, you're told you can't talk to victims, you can't try to talk to witnesses. Uh, and my experience has been that if a defendant ever dared to attack one of my family members as a prosecutor, that defendant could be wearing an orange jumpsuit sooner than later, and especially the judge's family, as Joe said. I mean, you can get a gavel in the back of your head, metaphorically speaking, for that. Uh, but I do think that Donald Trump is is wanting this. He wants to be sanctioned. He, at the very least, he wants the gag order to be expanded because nothing motivates his base more than grievance and martyrdom. And so we, I think he's daring Judge Mershon as he did with Judge Angoron. He's taunting them. And at the very least, I think also he wants to prolong an issue about whether the judge should recuse himself, whether he's biased and should be disqualified. And that could lead to more delays because he worries that this trial really is going to go soon. But Judge Mershon has decided not to give in and uh, take the bait and give in to more delays. But he can impose some real accountability here. And I agree with Joe and John and you and, and, and Weissman that there does seem to be a two-tier system of justice here. They're bending over backwards to protect this guy. And they're worried. The judges are worried that they don't want to look political. But if you don't act, 
That in itself looks political. If you choose not to decide, you'll still have made a choice, as Neil Peart said. And inaction here undermines faith in the criminal justice system and the rule of law. All right, State Attorney for Palm Beach County, Dave Varenberg. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. John Heilman, thank you as well. Always great to have you guys on and coming up. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.